Okay, welcome to episode 7-1, Exploring Exponential Models. So today, our objective is to model exponential growth and exponential decay. Right? Growth is just like it sounds. Growth is something that's going up. Meanwhile, decay is going to be something that's going down. So we'll talk about more about both those in a few minutes. Right? Our essential understanding is you can represent repeated multiplication with a function of the form y equals a b to the x. Right? Here's the important part. The x, the variable, is in the exponent. Right? That is what makes it an exponential function. Right? And b, of course, must be a positive number other than 1. Or, or else none of this works. Right? So let's talk about an exponential function. An exponential function is a function with the general form y equals a b to the x power. Again, the exponent is the variable. That's what makes it an exponential function. The variable is in the exponent. a does not equal to zero. If it did, everything here would go to zero. Right? That's why we say a is not equal to zero. Right? B is greater than zero, and B is not equal to one. Right? In the exponential function, the base B is a constant. The exponent X is the independent variable with the domain and the set of real numbers. So the most important thing to take away from this is that anytime we're talking about an exponential function, it is a function that looks like this, with the variable in the exponent. Right? So let's try to graph an exponential function. Easiest way to do this is just to come up with a table. So let's start to make a table. Right? We pick our x values. Let's start with 0. All that means is we take 2. Now we plug in x. 2 to the 0 power is going to equal 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Next, let's try 1. Now let's do 2 to the 1st power. That equals to 2. Let's try 2. Now we want 2 to the second power. That is 4. And lastly, let's try 3. Actually, let's do 2 more. Right, 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be 8. And then 2 to the 4 is going to be 16. Okay? So see what we're doing? We're changing the, or we're inputting our x values into the variable. All right? This gives us kind of a good picture of our function, but let's take it a little bit further. Let's also do a few negative numbers. How about negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3? All right? Now, we're going to put 2 to the negative 1 power. Anytime we have a negative exponent, it goes to the bottom of a fraction. That becomes 1 over 2 to the first power, which is, of course, 1 half. Next, for 2 to the negative 2 second power, this turns into this turns into 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. And then to the negative third power becomes 1 over 8. Now let's graph these points. Let's start with our negatives. Negative 3 and 1 eighth, that's about here. Negative 2 and a quarter is about here. A half is going to be in here. And now we get to the easier ones. 0 and 1, right there. 1, 2, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 8, 4 comma 16. And now we can draw our function. So we start very low, and then it starts to go, it starts to go up very quickly. And that's what an exponential function looks like. Starts at the bottom very slowly and goes up very fast. Here are the two different types of exponential functions. Here are the two different types we have. We have an exponential growth and exponential decay. Right? Exponential growth, exponential decay. Those are the two types of exponential behaviors. For growth, for exponential growth, 
as the value of x increases, the value of y decreases. And we see that here in the red. As x goes up, as x goes this way, y goes that way. On the backwards. I apologize. Right? We're talking about growth. Right? So growth is the blue one. As x goes up, y goes up. That's growth. And right? growth is in the blue. In the red is the K. So exponential decay, as x increases, y decreases, right? Approaching to zero. Both of these approach the x-axis, but never touch it. That's what's called asymptotic, right? So an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches as x or y increases in absolute value. So as x goes up, it approaches that line, but it never touches. That is called an asymptote. Right? Let's look more into exponential functions and what the letters mean. Right? So we have two letters here, A and B. If A is bigger than 0 and if B is bigger than 1, the function represents exponential growth. If A is greater than 0 and B is between 0 and 1, it represents exponential decay. So that means that if b is bigger than 1, the function goes up. If b is in between 0 and 1, that means if it's a fraction or if it's a decimal, the function will go down and represent exponential decay. In either case, the y-intercept is 0, comma, a. So whatever number there is there is going to be a y-intercept. Whatever number is right here is going to represent growth or decay. So let's look at a problem and see how it works. So in this case, our A would be here, our B would be here. Right? B is always the number that is raised to the exponent, to the variable, to the variable exponent. So in this case, this would represent, whoops, this would represent the K, and because B is less than 1, in between 1 and 0, and our, and our y-intercept would be 0, comma, a, which is 12. Okay? On this one over here, a and b are just like that, again, because b is always the one that's raised to the exponent. Okay? This would represent, this would represent growth, and my intercept would be 0, comma, a, which is 0.25. Finally, We have a word problem, right? So we have to read it and decide for ourselves whether or not this growth or decay. Well, the account is paying us interest. This is obviously going to be growth. You get paid interest, your money goes up. So this is growth. And my starting point is my y-intercept is about. So in this case, we don't have a formula, we just have to figure it out for ourselves. This leads us to uh, growth factors and decay factors. Right? So, for exponential growth, when y equals a b to the x, with b bigger than 1, the value of b is the growth factor. Uh, a quantity that exhibits exponential growth increases by a constant percentage each time period. The percentage increase r written as a decimal, is the rate of increase, right? or the growth rate, either one. When we want to find this, for exponential growth, we take the percent, add it to 1, and that's our growth factor. For decay, this works exactly the opposite way. Right? So for decay, we're going to know that B is going to be in between 0 and 1. B is the decay factor. The quantity decreases by a constant percentage. So the percentage decrease R, again, that's our rate of decay. And a rate of decay is usually expressed as a negative quantity. So B still equals 1 plus R. But in this case, R would be negative. Okay? So if I'm, if I'm telling you that my growth rate is 5%, that's going to equal a rate of increase of 
Well, 5% has a decimal, 0 0.05, 1.05. On the opposite hand, if I tell you I have a decay rate, right, a decay factor, rate of decay of negative 5%, well, I'm going to write that as a decimal, and I'm going to add it to 1, and I'm going to get 0.95. Notice my growth factor is bigger than 1. My decay factor is in between 1 or 0. Right. One of the most popular ways we use exponential growth and decay is with this function. A to the t equals a times 1 plus r to the t power, where red in red, the a means the amount after t periods, t is the number of time periods, a is my initial amount, and r is my rate of growth or rate of decay. For growth or decay to be exponential, a quantity changes by a fixed percentage each time period. This is most commonly found, and the problems we're going to work with the most, is money, compounded interest. So let's plug this into the formula. My formula, of course, from the previous page, 1 plus R to the T power. So now let's plug these in. So A is going to equal to my initial amount, 1,000 times 1 plus R, which is my rate, which is 5%. I write that as a decimal, 0 0.05 to the T power after six years. Right. Now it's just a matter of doing the calculations. 1,000, parentheses first, 1.05 to the 6 power. I can obviously see that this is my growth factor. Now I just need to work it out. So 1,000 times 1.05 to the 6 power is going to give me 1340. Whoops, 1340.095. Okay. Next, all right, same formula. The T power, plug in the numbers. 500 times 1 plus 0 0.035 to the fifth power. All right, simplify this. times 500 gives us 593.84. And that is one way we use exponential growth formula to solve an equation. And the most common equation is going to be one that includes compounded interest. These problems should help you do all three sections of the homework and the quiz.